Yeah, I mean, you really would have expected, and uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen here. I, I really, truly am. I think this could go completely either way. I think I do lean towards Hammy Squad a little bit more just now because Yugi's back in, and not because of, I guess it is because of Yugi, but I don't think it's because, like, Yugi carries the whole team. That's not the reason. It's because Yugi fits into the lineup that Hammy's drafted. Absolutely, and, you know, when we talk about Yugi, we heard it all the way through yesterday's draft. Uh, speaking of the draft, we are going on into it, but we heard everybody talking about Yugi saying he loves to split push. And the thing about split pushing is you gotta be ahead. So this early game is gonna be very important. Well, you don't, the thing is, you, like, you don't have to be ahead, but it sure helps. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. The thing is, like when, when you're split pushing, the best split pushers in the world, it doesn't matter like what MOBA we're talking about, the, the best split pushers in the world have the best game sense in the world. They can read and they know timings. They know when waves are coming, what that wave by itself can get done, how much people in the other lane, how fast they can push, and then they're going to decide, I'm going to go ahead and split away or not. But it, of course, it's going to help Like when you have someone on the other side of the map that can apply the pressure. That's where you're going to get the most done. So they would have to lean into that draft a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. We do have Hammy locking in that Lorelei. That's what he was talking about in the previous game, saying that Chuck managed to pick that up away from him, this time he's got that comfort pick for himself. So you expect a lot more comfort in that mid lane perhaps. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought it was it was kind of awkward talking about the Lorelei in that in that draft that you were talking about before because, uh, well, Hammy didn't get it, but he was the one that before the tournament started today, he was the one talking about how effective Lorelei is um, in almost every position. One of the most versatile uh, flex picks that you can get there. And obviously, as you mentioned, the one that he wanted to be playing himself. Yeah, absolutely. It's worth mentioning the bans as well. We've got Hammy's side banning away captives. Churnwalker and Finn both taken off of the board there. But then on the other side, Gabe Vizzle, they're banning the Anchor and then also banning Silvernail, who Silvernail, I was hoping we'd see a bunch of, but we've seen bans across the board so far today because, you know, these weapon power carries are just so strong right now. Yeah, they really are. I mean, obviously, like, it would have been a strong pick. I think it also, it kind of negates some of the mobility that Gabe Vizzle's already picked up off the bat. Like, the, we, you, you don't want to, like, have stakes down and suddenly, like, you're trying to blood for blood in or Vanguard onto someone. That can disrupt like everything that you're trying to do. Um, but as I'm looking at this draft come together, I I'm guessing Gabe Vizzle. This is a really strong draft. Like they, they've got the Arden over here, which I think is one of the most uh, strong power picks mm -hmm. you can grab right now. Uh, your Malene obviously is going to provide you burst damage. Will do well in the lane as you start to get like your first core item up and running. Kinetic will carry the game for you. We'll see what they're going to do with this Adagio, of course. And now that's a that's a full draft coming in. Was that the Vox last pick yeah. on the side of Team Hammy? Vox for Lulu Zio. We saw Lulu Zio on the Kinetic in his first game of the day. And he was dead. He didn't actually get snowball that hard, but in terms of how well he was playing individually, mm -hmm. he was winning 1v1s. He was making things happen. So I'm excited so to see that box. Hammy's Jewel going to be the last the pick. Celeste, he, he is, oh, sorry. We got the, yeah, Jewel does come in at the end, but I just thought it was interesting to see that Hammy did go with the Celeste in the end and gave uh, Channel over uh, that Lorelei. Yeah, so Lorelei going to be going into the captain role. And you can see Gabe Vizzle. Try hard face is on. It's time to get into try the game face. for him. And can we get like the try hard face like ping in game? Like that'd be dope. I, I would love to see that. Maybe we can get it as an emote in the Twitch. Yeah, chat. like we'll when someone's just sweating super hard against you in the lane, and you can just ping the try hard. Like, come on, dude, calm down. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'd love to ping that. I'm a bit of a rage pinger myself. So Are you? I'd love a couple that's of. That's one of my remotes. favorite pro teams of all time too. Rage, rage pingers. Oh man, that's that's old. School First right jersey there. I ever bought. Really? Yeah. I, honestly, I didn't even know they had jerseys to f available for purchase. Spring 2016, they were down in LA. That's before my time. Yeah, that's, it was. That's way back in the that's day. That's what I'm here. I'm the historian, you know? You absolutely are. Well, we're, we're getting ready. You can see Hammy smile on his face. So maybe this could be a fresh start for him. Yeah, it's like about it time Hammy. that we head on to Sovereign's Rise, though. We're heading on into Gabe Fizzle going up against Hammy, both with a loss on the board. This is everything for them. I'm kicking it off with Excoundrel and Dowsy once again. All right. Game three on to the rise here. Team Hammy and Team Gabe Vizzle looking to get their point on the board, but only one can do it here. We'll have to see who's able to find it. Team Hammy, though, having Yugi coming on to the squad. He should have been there in game one, wasn't quite there. Now maybe he can be the difference maker for Hammy's team. Yeah, they're, they're running with a, a very, um, I would say like a 3.6 composition here. You've got the Vox. Uh, you've got the Reza, the Lorelei, the Lance, and the Celeste coming through. Now, Celeste is still very strong on this update. She's one of the strong uh, CP carries that you can have in the mid lane. And we've got Hammy piloting it. So this should be a good Celeste game for him, obviously. Very late game scaling coming out from the side of Hammy's squad. 
Uh, and you also had the Reza, who's likely going to be going weapon power in the side lane here. I'm very interested that we are just seeing more weapon power Reza than CP Reza overall. Um, I, I, I think it just must be stronger than I originally thought. But regardless, Yugi is the guy that's piloting it, which obviously, as we know, Yugi a very, very strong Reza player. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know who Yugi XD is, this guy was the Idris one trick when Idris was considered weak. Oh my goodness, first blood. Hammy just goes down. Was not looking at the mid lane. Was not expecting it. Just not a great start for Team Happy. Uh, Hammy Tivo going to be pretty happy with uh, getting those point uh, gold into his system. But I mean, let's talk about Yugi for a second. When Idris was considered weak, Yugi XD was one tricking it in Vainglorious Gold and A. And then when Reza came out, he was one tricking Reza at that high level NA solo queue as well. Uh, and now that Reza is considered better in the weapon power, I mean, Yugi's Reza has just got even more scary. So this guy, when he gets his hands on either Idris or Reza, he kind of just dominates. Yeah, he is going to be in that tough 2v1 matchup that often occurs in the top side of the map though. So he will be maybe a little bit starved, a little bit resourceless. He's also going up against an Arden, who is an Arden jungle paired with a Kinetic. That's a very abusive lane to play against. So I imagine... Yugi's uh, growth in this game is going to be slightly stunted. Interesting uh, that we saw Hami go down for first blood in the mid lane. Hami was just a little bit careless with his positioning, heading back from that blue side jungle of the enemy uh, enemy area. And unfortunately, that was a really good capitalization by Gabe Bizzle just to walk in there, slow him down with the Gift of Fire, and Tivo able to follow up. Hami just a little bit careless. Wait a second. Okay, look at that. They get their own back. Take it down, Tivo. Great game coming through. From our cake, they're really just providing the pressure with that weapon power lens jungle. That's exactly what Team Hammy needed to get themselves back on track in that mid lane. Yeah, they uh, they should be able to get the doubles now. Also be able to exit with the CP buff too. So that is a really good turnaround, a nice gank. This is kind of what the jungle roll does now. Um, they, they hang around bot and they sometimes roam mid to try and find a gank. And then they're mainly there to control the enemy blue side jungle. It is kind of your role as a jungler at this point in time. And Lance is very good at making those roams to the mid lane and just coming away with some kind of gank, some kind of kill. And like, hey, it manages to pull it off just there. Absolutely. And, you know, it's nice to see that Gay Vizzle's back on that captain role. I mean, he had fun on top. Wasn't really what was necessary for his team. I, you think Gabe Bizzle, yes, he's a talented mechanical player and play every role very well, but it's his captaining ability that really makes the difference here. And that's exactly what he needs to do. He needs yeah. to be piloting them from the captain position. He was technically jungle in the uh, in the previous game as uh, he was playing the Lance uh, Joe with old school in the top side of the map, which is technically their bottom side of the map. So he was technically jungle on that Lance. Uh, but again, I think that was more because the Lance was picked and we know that Gabe has got a very good Lance that he was kind of shuffled into that role. But like we said, he's much more confident, much more able in that captain position. And he's on one of his best at captains as well in the form of that Adagio. Old school and uh, Papa John managed to get that turret away from Yugi. This now relieves just a little bit of pressure from Yugi, but it will open up that side of the map around Blackclaw. Not as useful when you're on that side of the map, because really you want to get that control around Ghost, uh, Ghostwing in the early game. However, still very good now to allow those rotations to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Yugi was never going to be able to hold that turret forever. It's just impossible as a res against an Arden who has just so much base damage in the early levels against the Kinetic who's got that range as well. Now he has a little bit more uh, freedom, I suppose, to roam around the map, get the experience in gold to share it from those jungles and then get the gold from the lane as it crashes on in. But it also means that old school has been enabled to grow as well in this Kinetic. If there's no pressure towards a Kinetic, then she's going to have a very easy in route towards that late game where she has so much damage. Yeah, and you can see Old School going for the Serpent's Mass build here as well. In bot lane level, second. goes in for the engage onto Lulu. Gay Fizzle's there with the Fountain. They want this fight, but level 6 comes through for Lulu, keeping him nice and strong. And I guess uh, at this point, level's not really in position. Shamu is moving down towards this bot side to try and provide the pressure. They've got the lane and they've got potentially an ability to take down this turret. We'll have to see if they do commit. Doesn't seem likely though, considering it is just that Captain minion. At this time, though, good rotations coming out of Gabe Bizzle knows where he has to be. Really interesting. I want to talk a little bit about these bot lane builds that we are starting to see open up here. Lulu and Old School going with something more like the Serpent's Mask into Bone Saw, which is what I envision both of them seem to be working towards. That is a build that has only just started to come through. This is the first time that we've seen it in this current meta that they're not using the Tension Ooh. Bow. As we Gabe see Bizzle's just fully got out here. 
Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, level unable to save him. Did have the big red button. Might have been able to force people away, but not much CP behind that jewel at this point in time. Wonder if level's just going to use that to clear the wave. I mean, yeah, nice. at this point, it might be worthwhile. Not, not even going to do that. Hit the tower, go down. Old school does move his way in, and that's going to be archaic. Dead to all rights, and I think a, uh, a little lens can do against that, that kinetic. And you really don't want to be feeding her either. That's a kill going her way. Love gold in the bank for old school here. Tifu's Malin. Yes. Wonder what he can do with that. He's got the Dragon's Eye first, which is an interesting uh, pickup for me. I often don't think Dragon's Eye is the best pickup on Malin because you're often more about your burst and less about the consistent sustained damage in fights. The, ro the rotation from old school down to the bot lane does mean that we get a. Oh, oh it's a steal! What a steal coming out from Hammy. That is a big, big win for Hammy's team simply because old school rotated bot. That gave up that top lane tower over to Yugi that gave him loads of free farm. The only reason old school rotated down was to get pressure around that ghost swing and Hammy stealing it is a massive blow. And that entire minute, uh, minute and a half setup that we just had for ghost swing goes down the drain. And Yugi, the pressure he's putting onto this top tower means that people have to rotate up to stop that, that from going down. Now this mid lane's under pressure as well. The tables have turned immensely, and it looks like they're going for a fight. Old School's going to be the target. The root comes through as well from Shamu. Old School goes low, but it's level. They're going to focus down. This jewel going to go down. Here comes the rest of Team Gay Bizzle from the flank. Can they get anything is the question. Yuki commits to the fight, and that may have been ill-advised. Rooted in towards that gauntlet. That's going to be Yuki stunned and taken on out. Gay Bizzle sets this one up perfectly. Archaic next to four, and Shamu going to boots away. But the split pressure coming out of the side of hammy mid and tier two bot lane looking pretty low yeah actually that was a good turnaround for hammy's team lulu ziu going for the poison shift build for vox so very classic oh. vox build coming hammy. out here Wait. hammy's going ham he wants tivo can't quite find it tivo able to go into his uh invulnerability state now it is just going to be him wave clearing under the tower Hammy should be able to get this though. A rotation from Old School and Papa John might mean that they uh, save this mid lane tier one, but it looks very unlikely as Luzio makes his way over. So again, more structures now. Three turrets in favor of Hammy's team that builds up a 3k gold lead across the board. And Dowsey, we should reflect on some of the items that we're seeing come out. Luluzio going for the Poison Shiv Sorrow Blade build. Wondering if he's just going to go for a classic box build that builds into a uh, breaking point or whether we see him pick up a tension bow for his particular build path as well. And it looks like old school is actually going for a spell sword serpent's mask kinetic build, which I guess gets followed up with um, some kind of attack speed item like a bone sword or a breaking point. Yeah, no, I, I mean, if you can spam your uh, your B, get those stuns going down with your A, it's not too shabby. I we'll have to see how that does play out. A bit of CC towards the kinetic, which uh, provides old school that, uh, I guess, mo mobility as well as um, lockdown to really just lay down the damage. TiVo as well has the lockdown. You got that gauntlet coming through from the Arden as well and level to be able to just um, kind of just wail down with a big red button. And I don't constant burst damage. At this point... Gabe Vizzle's team needs to find some openings here. They're not out of the count just yet, but things do seem to be snowballing in the favor of Team Hammy. Lulu Zio is caught out though, and that's going to be him falling in just a second. Doesn't look like that core collapse is going to do much there. Looks like everyone else is coming through. Can they get more is the question. Gabe Vizzle gets stunned up, but it's not really meaning anything at this point. I say core collapse, I mean Solar Storm. It's been a while since I've played a bit of Celeste myself. Yugi actually again left alone in this top side of the map. Papa John, the one that's trying to protect this top lane turret, as Yugi has to be a little bit careful. Bit of a fight breaking out around this ghost wing. Lots of damage done. Hammy, can he lay down more? Is the question. Here it comes. He's going in. Solar Storm blows up old school. That's a 2v4, mind you. And they're winning it. Here comes Yugi. He's going to turn this around in favor of them even more so. Team Hammy's team is just too strong right now. Papa John wants to steal, but he can't find it. Now he has to use the gauntlet to escape. Not really a, a good usage of that ability, but will snipe away the crystal. Trent from Yugi. Yugi says I want Gay Bizzle, but I mean, he's not going to be able to find it. 
Yeah, unfortunately, Gabe's team really struggling in their first couple of games on the field. And remember, Gabe really needs to win this game to give himself a shot of putting them in the top two. I kind of looked at this team and I said to Dalsy, I thought that they had one of the strongest chances of getting into the top two before we even started, just because of some of the quality players on their roster. But unfortunately, they just haven't been able to settle into the groove. Level not really doing a huge amount on this duel right now. Not having the impact on the team fights that he would have wanted. His farm is much, much further behind than Yugi. Yugi on a two item spike and level really struggling with just that spell fire. And Jewel is one of those carries that really just doesn't work that well with just one item. Um, especially in the CP path, you want to be hitting very hard with that ability, which means you really need a lot of CP to back it up. And unfortunately, in level just too far away from that being a reality right now. I just love the way that Yugi's played this game so far. In the 2v1 matchup on this weapon power, Reza is going to be in a rough spot early game but he's just playing like a solo queue player constantly splishing it split pushing in mid and only really coming to team fights when absolutely necessary giving hammy's team all the power that they want to make those crop map cross map plays now the ghost wing is in their favor as well and they can really start hammering down on these objectives in the base look at lulu just going in on towards this arden making sure that the front line uh, for all the side of Team Gabe Bizzle is non-existent. Yuki's just going to solo this Black Claw at this point. His weapon power is a, he's got the sustain from the Serpent's Mask. He doesn't need any help. And whilst he does so, Hami is just going to take down this mid lane tower. Whilst Ludo Zizu pushes in the bot lane. Macro gameplay on point for Team Hami. And the rest of the team can rotate Reza towards the half soloing of this. I know, he's just soloing it. He's been doing it this whole time. So much what? sustain coming through. It's unreal. I mean, Yuki is the god that is, uh, has always played these uh, these weapon power bruisers like Reza, like Idris. That's disgusting. This is why you that's play weapon power Reza, apparently, at Scoundrel. Yeah, that's just disgusting. Right? Why is that a thing? Why, you, you why is, so. no, but why is that a thing? What, <laughs> what, 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 is, what in the world makes that a thing, Dowsy? How could a Reza with two items solo Blacklaw, that's a pick going off onto, uh, Old school, but Lulu yeah, trades his yeah. life for it. Does trade his life. It's going to be TiVo going down. They've locked Papa John against the wall. The CC is there, but the fountain will keep him alive. Hammy, meanwhile, hammering down this middle lane tower. Yuki hammering down the top lane tower. It is just disastrous for Team Game Vizzle. They are losing on all fronts. And now the Black Claw's onto the armory. And Yuki's going to take down that tower without any hitches. Been able to group up with the rest of his team. Armory going to be deleted in just half a second here. And maybe they go for a kill as well. They don't need to. They could just go rotate to the bot and make sure that tower falls as well. There it is. Solar Storm to secure the deal. Arcade doing the work with that minion candied up way. Papa John will potentially just punish him for an overextension. Shamu comes through. Can actually just lock down Papa John and allow Arcade to escape. So they get their cake and they eat it too, Scoundrel. Everyone backs off. It's just disastrous for Gabe Bizzle. Yeah, I just don't see many ways to come back from this. The problem with dealing with Yuki in this game, right, is that he's able to split push for the entire game for the simple reason that there is no real solid engage coming out from Gabe, right? If they want to punish Yugi split push, and the best way to deal with a split push, and this is the truth um, for every MOBA game. Old school? I mean, yeah, can you deal with Yugi? No, you can't. <laughs> so the, the best way to deal with the split push in every MOBA game ever is to have some kind of hard engage to force a five versus four situation. You have no hard engage, really, apart from the Arden Gauntlet, which is very easy to crucible your way out of uh, if you are on the side of Hammy's team. So there is no is way to... There is, I, I mean, just, just just ignore it right now. This is this, this game's pretty much over. This, 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 they're, they're, they're inting it. They're just running it down mid. This is this game's over, right? This is this game is, is absolutely done for Gabe's team. There's really no way back. and Because there is no way to punish the split push, right? That's what we, you know, we're talking about. There's no way to punish the split push. Uh, and that is just so difficult. You, you can't punish a Celeste because she's just able to, to, to wail on you from range for free because there's no way to you to abuse that. This is unreal. Reza is unreal right now. I mean, he has the sustain of a bruiser, but he has the damage of, uh, I mean, a CP Reza. It, it's, it's gross. <laughs> He's playing weapon power. Yuki's pretty much 1v5ing, whilst the rest of his team walks around the map doing objectives at this point. Yugi is unstoppable, and that's going to be bot lane tower taken on down as well. The engage comes through, and it's Hammy putting down the deeps from the front line, back line, and Lulu going in for the damage as well. Looking for old school. Can they get the kill on to this kinetic is the question. It's pretty healthy at this point on the back line. Hammy has to be a little bit careful. 
that he doesn't do uh overextend too much because yugi's gone down in the top side worth noting that he a bit off more than he could chew against the uh the opposing red forces does mean that the rest of his team do have to fall back don't want to find themselves caught out but i say that as they do engage onto archaic and they take him on down as well one for one trade is going to be the uh, Lorelei losing her life. TiVo wants to try and chase on down to Hami and Lulu Zio. The rest of his team doing their best to forward through that choke point. But you don't want to walk into too many Hilo Genesis there. At this point, Gabe Vizzle surviving at Scoundrel, living on a prayer. I'm trying to think of a way that Gabe's team can stay in this game. The problem is that they're going to get tore apart in every single lane right now. The fact is that Old School doesn't have any defense. It's going to be dev very difficult for him to kite back versus Yugi. And Yugi now with a tornado trigger is going to be even more obnoxious to deal with. And the fact, like I said, there is no hard engage to, to punish a Vox and, and a Celeste and try and find a way into a fight. And this Black Claw should spell the end of the game. Yeah, you'd think so. At this point, there's not much that... Gabe Vizzle can do to keep his team alive. Black Claw started up by Yugi here. The deeps are real as the rest of his team is there to take this down as quickly as possible. A Solar Storm finds three in the mid lane. The rest of Team Gabe Vizzle coming forward, but Shamu is holding off the back for, uh, forces. And there it is, Black Claw taken, and now they turn the fight towards it. Yugi's going towards the back line, straight onto Old School. That, that's going to be very disastrous if they lose their connect this quickly. Yugi is being forced back in Old School, chasing them, wanting to find the kills for Hami. Already taken down this Adagio. Old School chasing Yugi. It's a 1v1. Can Yugi turn it around is the question with this wrestler. I think he can. He does. He takes him out, but it is going to be him surviving and sustaining, and the rest of the team's falling. That's it for Gay Fizzle. It's curtains as it's only this Arden left alive. Hammy will take him out easily. Everyone's dead. It's an ace. And Team Hammy will find their first point in this All Stars tournament. Dalcy, when an item can turn a carry with zero weapon power ratios into one of the most destructive weapon power carries on the field, you know that that weapon item is broken. That's all I'm going to say about this one. Ah, oh, man, that was beautiful to watch. I love Yugi's Rezar. I love Yugi's Idris. And seeing it here on the All-Star stage is impressive. I mean, there's highlights galore, but I'm sure my Hunchables, my Hunchables, and I <laughs> wants to break it down. So let's throw it back to them before I break.